Hi everyone this is Ruchi Kulkarni and today we are going to do the chapter The Bond of Love written by Kenneth Anderson and this chapter is from your book Beehive of Class 9th There's definitely an emotional bond between human beings and animals Animals have always been our friends however it is we humans that have caused them harm with our vile intentions We must not forget that animals too have feelings and reciprocate love with warmth and affection the bond of love is a fascinating account of an orphaned sloth bear that was rescued by the author and gifted to his wife as a pet the bear's intelligence playful nature memory and sense of affection won everyone's heart especially that of the author's wife in this session we'll read and understand the chapter followed by significance of the title moral summary and question answers so let's begin with the author kenneth anderson kenneth douglas stewart anderson was born on 8 march 1910 in bolaram and came from a british family that settled in india for six generations he was an indian born british writer and hunter who wrote books with his adventures in the jungles of south india his love for the inhabitants of the indian jungle led him to big game hunting and to writing real life adventure stories some of his famous books are nine man eaters and one rogue man eaters and jungle killers the call of the man eater tales from the indian jungle the fires of passion jungle tales from children and many more Anderson's books have been translated into many languages He died on 30th August 1974 in Bangalore India at the age of 64 Can there be love and friendship between human beings and wild animals Let's read a fascinating account of an orphaned sloth bear that was rescued by the author. Orphaned means one whose parents have died and rescued means saved. Sloth bears inhabit forested areas including the tropical rainforests of India and grasslands at lower elevations. Elevations means height and inhabit means live in. Sloth bears have very shaggy hair and long muzzles. Shaggy means rough, thick hair, and muzzles are nose and mouth of an animal. Using their claws to dig, claws are long nails of an animal. They can then use their lips to form a tube, which can go deep into the ground or into hard-to-reach areas like dead trees for their food. Their main food is termites. You can hear them suck up their food from several feet away. Now termites are small insects which feed on wood. Let's read this interesting story and know what does the bond of love mean. I will begin with Bruno, my wife's pet sloth bear. I got him for her by accident. Two years ago, we were passing through the sugarcane fields near Mysore. People were driving away the wild pigs from the fields by shooting at them. Some were shot and some escaped. We thought that everything was over when suddenly a black sloth bear came out panting in the hot sun. Panting means breathing heavily. Now I will not shoot a sloth bear wantonly, but unfortunately for the poor beast. one of my companions did not feel that way about it and promptly shot the bear on the spot wantonly means for no good reason and beast means animal as we watched the fallen animal we were surprised to see that the black fur on its back moved and left the prostrate body prostrate means lying on the ground facing downwards then we saw It was a baby bear that had been riding on its mother's back when the sudden shot had killed her. 
the little creature ran around its prostrate parent making a pitiful noise. Pitiful means sad. The author and his wife had a pet sloth bear whose name was Bruno. The author got this Bruno home by accident and he gifted it to his wife. About two years back when the author and his friends were passing through the sugarcane fields near Mysore, people were driving wild pigs. They were driving those wild pigs away from the fields by shooting at them. Now some pigs were shot and some had escaped. The author and his friends thought that everything was over but then they saw a sloth bear which was breathing heavily which came out of the fields. The author would not have shot that sloth bear but unfortunately one of his friends shot that poor animal. When that animal or the sloth bear fell on the ground they watched that something moved on its back and then they saw that it was a baby sloth bear which was riding on its mother's body. The mother was killed but the baby was now running around the mother's body and it was making a very sad noise because it was trying to wake up its mother. I ran up to it to attempt a capture. It scooted into the sugarcane field. Scooted means ran away. Following it with my companions, I was at last able to grab it by the scruff of its neck. Scruff is an animal's neck. While it snapped and tried to scratch me with its long hooked claws. Snapped means it made a sharp sound. We put it in one of the gunny bags we had brought and when I got back to Bangalore, I duly presented it to my wife. She was delighted. Delighted means happy. She at once put a colored ribbon around its neck and after discovering the cub was a boy, she christened it Bruno. Christened means named. Bruno soon took to drinking milk from a bottle. It was but a step further and within a very few days, he started eating and drinking everything else. And everything is the right word for he ate porridge, made from any ingredients, vegetables, fruit, nuts, meat, especially pork. Pork is the meat of a pig. Curry and rice, regardless of condiments and chilies. Condiments means spices. Bread, eggs, chocolates, sweets, pudding, ice cream, etc, etc, etc. As for drink, milk, tea, coffee, lime juice, aerated water, buttermilk, beer, alcoholic liquor and in fact anything liquid. It all went down with relish. Relish means great enjoyment. When the author and his friends tried to catch the baby sloth bear, it ran into the sugarcane field. But then after a lot of attempt, the author was able to grab the sloth bear. He put it in one of the gunny bags that they had got and he took the baby bear to Bangalore to his wife. He presented that baby bear to his wife. The wife was very delighted and she at once put a ribbon around his neck. When they came to know that it was a boy, they named him Bruno. Bruno then started to grow up and he could eat or drink anything, whether it was chili, whether it was sweet, whether it was nuts, vegetables, curry, rice, meat, bread, eggs, chocolates, anything for that matter, he could eat or drink. He even drank tea, coffee, lime juice, alcoholic liquor, beer, buttermilk, anything that was given to him, he used to eat or drink joyfully. The bear became very attached to our two Alsatian dogs. Alsatian is a breed of a large dog which is used for guarding. And to all the children of the tenants living in our bungalow, he was left quite free in his younger days and spent his time in playing, running into the kitchen and going to sleep in our beds. One day, an accident befell him. Befell means happened to him. I put down poison, that is barium carbonate, 
to kill the rats and mice that had got into my library. Bruno entered the library as he often did and he ate some of the poison. Paralysis set in to the extent that he could not stand on his feet. But he dragged himself on his stumps to my wife who called me. Stumps is the tail end of the animal. I guessed what had happened. Off I rushed in the car to the vet's residence. Vet is a doctor who treats animals. A case of poisoning. Tame bear. Barium carbonate. What to do? The baby bear which the author got, whose name was Bruno, was very attached to the two Alsatian dogs which the author already had. And there were tenants in his bungalow, that is people who lived on rent in his bungalow, and they had children. Bruno was also attached to all those children. He used to play with those children when he was young. He used to run around into the kitchen and also sleep in the beds of author and his wife. But one day, when he was small, there was an accident which happened to him. Bruno went to the library where the author had kept poison. In other words, barium carbonate, which is a chemical name of that poison. The author had kept that poison to kill the rats and mice in the library. Bruno entered the library and he ate that poison. As soon as he ate the poison, his both the legs were paralyzed. He could not get up on his feet, so he dragged himself to the author's wife. The author and his wife, both of them rushed Bruno to a vet. A vet is a doctor who treats animals. The vet then tried to understand that it was a case of poisoning. Bruno was a tame bear. Tame bear means a, a wild animal which was domesticated in someone's house. So in other words, Bruno could not be called as wild because he was staying in the house of human beings. And therefore the term tame bear is used here for Bruno. Now the vet started to think what to do with Bruno and how to save him. Out came his medical books and a feverish reference to index began. Feverish means something that shows excitement or energy. What poison did you say, sir? Barium carbonate. Ah, yes. B, ba, barium salts. Ah, barium carbonate. Symptoms, paralysis, treatment, injections of... Just a minute, sir. I will bring my syringe and the medicine. A dash back to the car. Bruno still floundering about on his stumps, but clearly weakening rapidly. Floundering means struggling to move. Some vomiting, heavy breathing and heaving flanks and gaping mouth. Gaping mouth means opened mouth. Hold him, everybody. In goes the hypodermic. Hypodermic is a long needle which is used to give an injection under the skin. Bruno squeals. Squeals means shouts. 10 cc of the antidote enters his system without a drop being wasted. 10 minutes later, condition unchanged. Another 10 cc injected. 10 minutes later, breathing less stertorous. Stertorous breathing means noisy breathing, as in snoring. Bruno can move his arms and legs a little although he cannot stand yet. 30 minutes later, Bruno gets up and has a great feed. He looks at us disdainfully as much as to say. Disdainfully means hatefully. What's barium carbonate to a big black bear like me? Bruno is still eating. Now when the doctor understood that it was a case of poisoning, he took out his medical books and began to see the index to find barium carbonate because that was the name of the poison which Bruno had eaten. The doctor read the symptoms of the poisoning and also the treatment. So now at this point of time, the doctor knew which medicine to be injected to Bruno so that he can be saved. They went to Bruno. Bruno was at the back of the car. 
he was floundering that is he was struggling to move he was breathing very heavily he had even vomited and he had opened his mouth so in other words bruno was not in a very good condition the doctor then took out a syringe and he gave him 10 cc that is the amount 10 cc is the amount of antidote antidote is a medicine which is used to clear off the poison from the body or clear off the effect of the poison so at first the vet gave him 10 cc amount of antidote it entered into bruno's body but the condition remain unchanged the second time after 10 minutes again another injection was given to him which made his breathing less noisy and right after 30 minutes bruno could get up he could stand on his feet and after standing and after seeing him active people gave him some food to eat and as bruno was eating his food he looked at everyone as if nothing had happened he wanted to say as if barium carbonate was nothing for a strong body like his another time he found nearly 1 gallon of old engine oil which i had drained from the sump of the stud breaker and was keeping as a weapon against the inroads of termites sump is a container in lower part of an engine into which a liquid that is not needed can flow and stud breaker is an old american car in roads means an attack he promptly drank the lot but it had no ill effects whatsoever the months rolled on and bruno had grown many times the size he was when he came he had equaled the alsatians in height and had even outgrown them but was just as sweet just as mischievous just as playful mischievous means naughty and he was very fond of us all above all he loved my wife and she loved him too she had changed his name from bruno to baba a hindustani word signifying small boy and he could do a few tricks too at the command baba wrestle or baba box he vigorously tackled anyone who came forward for a rough and tumble vigorously means with great strength give him a stick and say baba hold gun and he pointed the stick at you ask him baba where's baby and he immediately produced and cradled affectionately a stump of wood which he had carefully concealed in his straw bed cradled means held gently but because of the tenant's children poor bruno or baba had to be kept chained most of the time there was one more time when bruno had drank at least a gallon of old engine oil the author had left it to drain in a container and so that this oil could be used to kill the termites termites are those insects which feed on wood since bruno was naughty he drank that engine oil promptly but fortunately or luckily that engine oil did not have any kind of bad effect on him and then the time passed by bruno had grown into a bigger version bruno had grown many times the size of when he was brought by the author he was as tall as alsatians and then after that he even outgrew them but even when as grown up he was just as sweet or as naughty and playful as he was when he was a baby bruno and author's wife had a very strong bond between each other they both loved each other very much and sometimes the author's wife used to call him baba with love baba is an indian word which means small boy bruno had also learned to do a few tricks when someone would say baba wrestle or baba box then he would roughly give a punch to anyone or tumble anyone who came in front of him when someone gave a stick to baba and said baba hold gun 
then he would point the stick at that person as if he was pointing a gun to someone. If someone asked him, Baba, where's baby? Then he would go to his bed, which was made of straw. He had hidden a piece of wood there. He would take out that wood and cradle or hold gently as if someone held a baby. But now that Bruno had grown into such a big size, he had to be chained most of the time because of tenants' children. Now children were getting scared upon seeing his big size. So he was being chained most of the time. Then my son and I advised my wife and friends advised her too to give Baba to the zoo at Mysore. He was getting too big to keep at home. After some weeks of such advice, she at last consented. Consented means agreed. Hastily and before she could change her mind, a letter was written to the curator of the zoo. Hastily means quickly and curator here is a person in charge of the zoo. Did he want a tame bear for his collection? He replied, yes. The zoo sent a cage from Mysore in a lorry a distance of 87 miles and Baba was packed off. Lorry means truck. We all missed him greatly, but in a sense, we were relieved. My wife was inconsolable. Inconsolable means heartbroken. She wept and fretted. Fretted means worried. For the first few days, she would not eat a thing. Then she wrote a number of letters to the curator. How was Baba? Back came the replies. Well, but fretting. He refuses food too. Since Bruno had grown too big to keep at home, everyone, including the author, their son, their friends and relatives, advised them to send Bruno to the zoo. Finally, the author's wife agreed. And before she could change her mind, the author quickly wrote a letter to the curator or the in charge of the zoo, whether they wanted a tame or domesticated bear for their collection. The zoo agreed and they sent a big cage in a truck from Mysore to Bangalore and Baba was sent off to zoo. Everyone missed Bruno or Baba too much, but there was a sense of relief because now that he had gone, they did not have to chain him up or people were not now scared of coming into their house. But author's wife was very heartbroken. She just cried and worried. After a few days, she wrote number of letters to the in charge of the zoo to ask about Baba's help and condition. And the replies were also the same, that he was okay, but he was worried too and he refuses to eat anything. The same happened with author's wife as well. The wife also stopped eating for the first few days. So in other words, both Bruno and author's wife were longing for each other. They were missing each other so greatly that they had left eating food and they just kept crying and worrying for each other. After that, friends visiting Mysore were begged to make a point of going to the zoo and seeing how Baba was getting along. They reported that he was well but looked very thin and sad. All the keepers at the zoo said he was fretting. Fretting means worried. For three months, I managed to restrain my wife from visiting Mysore. Restrain means stopping. Then she said one day, I must see Baba. Either you take me by car or I will go myself by bus or train. So I took her by car. Friends had conjectured. Conjectured means formed an opinion by guessing that the bear would not recognize her. I had thought so too, but while she was yet some yards from his cage, Baba saw her and recognized her. He howled with happiness. She ran up to him, petted him through the bars and he stood up on his head in delight. For the next three hours, she would not leave that cage. She gave him tea, lemonade, cakes, ice cream and what not. Then closing time came and we had to leave. 
My wife cried bitterly. Baba cried bitterly. Even the hardened curator and the keepers felt depressed. As for me, I had reconciled myself to what I knew was going to happen next. Reconciled means came to accept. The author and his wife used to tell their friends, whoever visited Mysore, to go to zoo and see how Baba was doing. They all reported that Baba looked very thin and sad. The keepers of the zoo were also very worried for Baba. For the next three months, the author tried to stop his wife from visiting Mysore. But one day, she gave an ultimatum. She told author that she has to see Baba. Either he should take her by car or she will go herself. Their friends had thought that by now the bear would not recognize her because it was a long time. And they both also had thought so. But when they went to the zoo and author's wife was just some distance away from the cage, Baba saw her and recognized her. He started to howl. He started to shout with happiness. And the author's wife ran up to that cage and she started to pet him through the bars of the cage. Baba was so happy that he stood on his head to express his joy. For the next three hours, the author's wife gave him all the things that Baba liked or Bruno liked to eat and drink. She gave him tea, lemonade, cakes, ice creams, what not. And when there was time for the zoo to be closed and when there was time for the author and the wife to leave, the wife started to cry very heavily. And same happened with Baba. Both of them started to cry. The keepers of the zoo or the curator that is the in charge of the zoo also felt very depressed. Now as for the author, he could come to understand what was going to happen next. And if we all guess, then the next thing to happen was that the wife will not leave Baba alone again. Oh, please, sir, she asked the curator. May I have my Baba back? Hesitantly, he answered, Madam, he belongs to the zoo and is government property now. I cannot give away government property. But if my boss, the superintendent at Bangalore agrees, certainly you may have him back. There followed the return journey to Bangalore and a visit to the superintendent's bungalow. A tearful pleading. Pleading means requesting. Baba and I are both fretting for each other. Will you please give him back to me? He was a kind-hearted man and consented. Consented means agreed. Not only that, but he wrote to the curator telling him to lend us a cage for transporting the bear to Bangalore. Back we went to Mysore again, armed with the superintendent's letter. Baba was driven into a small cage and hoisted on top of the car. The cage was tied securely and a slow and careful return journey to Bangalore was accomplished. Accomplished means done or finished. Now as the author had expected what will happen next, the same thing happened. Author's wife did not want to part with Baba and so she asked the curator or the in charge of the zoo to give Baba back to her. But the in charge had no powers. He told her that it was now a government property and if she wanted to take Baba back home, then she'll have to talk to the superintendent who lives at Bangalore. The author and his wife went back to Bangalore and met the superintendent and requested him to give Baba back. The superintendent was a very kind-hearted man and he agreed. He wrote a letter which was addressed to the in charge of zoo and told him that a cage should be given to them for transporting the bear from Mysore to Bangalore. Both the author and his wife took that letter to the in charge of the zoo in Mysore and they put Baba or Bruno in a cage and this cage was tied on the top of the car. And after that, the author drove his car slowly and carefully back to Bangalore. And thus, Bruno was brought back home. Once home, 
a squad of coolies were engaged for special work in our compound. An island was made for Baba. It was 20 feet long and 15 feet wide and was surrounded by a dry pit or moat, 6 feet wide and 7 feet deep. A wooden box that once housed fowls was brought and put on the island for Baba to sleep in at night. Fowls are the poultry birds like cock, hen, etc. Straw was placed inside to keep him warm and his baby, the gnarled stump. Gnarled means rugged or twisted. Stump is the piece of wood. Along with his gun, the piece of bamboo, both of which had been sentimentally preserved since he had been sent away to the zoo, were put back for him to play with. In a few days, the coolies hoisted the cage on to the island and Baba was released. Hoisted means raised by means of ropes or pulleys. He was delighted, standing on his hind legs. Hind legs are the back legs. He pointed his gun and cradled his baby. My wife spent hours sitting on the chair there while he sat on her lap. He was 15 months old and pretty heavy too. Once the author and his wife had brought Bruno home, after that they called few workers to do some special work in their compound. They made an island kind of a thing where Baba could stay. That island was 20 feet long and 15 feet wide. And this island which was rectangular in shape was surrounded by a pit. They made this pit which was 6 feet wide and 7 feet deep. Now, because of this pit, Baba could not come out of that island and also he need not be chained any longer. On that island, they had kept a wooden box. This box used to house cocks and hens previously and now this box was used as a home for Bruno. And inside that, they had kept some straw so that Bruno could keep himself warm and two sticks one which he considered as his baby and another one which he considered as his gun. The piece of bamboos which both were uh, preserved when Bruno was not there. They both were his toys and both the things were placed in that island in his home. And after a few days when this island was made, the coolies came and they kept that cage on the island and then Baba was released. So on that island, Baba used to roam around very freely. He was no longer chained and no one was even scared that he might come over onto them. Bruno was very delighted. He stood on his hind legs and very joyfully he used to point his gun or cradle his baby. Arthur's wife was happy too. She used to spend hours sitting on a chair and Bruno used to sit on her lap. Though now Bruno was such a grown-up sloth bear, he was 15 months old now and he had become very heavy. The way my wife reaches the island and leaves it is interesting. I have tied a rope to the overhanging branch of a mango tree with a loop at its end. Putting one foot in the loop, she kicks off with the other to bridge the six-foot gap that constitutes the width of the surrounding pit. The return journey is made the same way. But who can say now that a sloth bear has no sense of affection, no memory and no individual characteristics? Now Bruno's island had a deep, six feet deep moat or pit around it. So it was difficult to go to the island. But there was a very interesting way which uh, the author had thought of on how to reach the island. The author had tied a rope from the branch of a mango tree and on the other end of the rope he had made a loop. So the author's wife would put his uh, foot in the loop and she would kick off with the other foot and this way by hanging on to the rope she would reach the island and in the same way she would come back. And now with things or Bruno's stay had become so comfortable, both for Bruno and the family as well as the tenants, everyone was very 
happy. Bruno was delighted and so was Arthur's wife. But who knows or who could say that a sloth bear like Bruno had no sense of affection, no memory or no individual characteristics. When we have read the story, we come to understand that even animals have got that sense of belonging and that love which is the greatest bond which they can share with humans. If you have ever had a pet animal, say a dog or a cat, you would understand what I am saying. That this bond of love which the humans and the animals share is something we cannot deny. And animals do have memory even if you are away from them for a few days. They do recognize you. They can never forget you. And they do have their individual characteristics which sets them apart from other animals. So the story of Bruno written by Kenneth Anderson has shown us that there can be a strong bond of love between an animal and a human being always. The title of the story, The Bond of Love, is quite appropriate as the contents of the story focus on a relationship of love and affection between human beings and animals. The narrator, through the medium of his wife and her pet sloth bear, reveals that love knows no boundaries. It even crosses the barrier of species. So this story very vividly describes the bond of love which was shared between the author's wife and Bruno. The theme of the story expresses that even wild animals like sloth bears have emotions, affection and deep bonds. The story is developed around the concept that love is reciprocal. Even animals respond sincerely to the affection and care shown to them by human beings. And the pets that are reared with sincere love and affection develop an unbreakable bond with their human caretakers. Therefore, show kindness and concern for animals because they too deserve a good like like us. It's time now for me to wrap up this session. Don't forget to watch the summary and question answers which I'm going to flash in just a moment. I'll see you again in my next video. Till then, take good care of yourself and stay blessed. Bye-bye.